Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the service. If you will stand, please take your hymn book. Let's sing number 19 in our hymn book. Number 19. <clears throat> Christ our Redeemer died on the cross, died for the sinner, paid all his dues. Sprinkle your soul with the blood of the Lamb, and I will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I See the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Chiefest of sinner, Jesus will save all he has promised that he will do. Wash in the fountain, open for sin, and I will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. On the last verse, oh, great compassion, oh, boundless love, oh, loving kindness, faithful and true. Find peace and shelter under the blood. And I will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Let's sing one more, number 27. 27. <clears throat> What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. On the last verse, this is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Well, let's pray together here this evening. Father, we are thankful for the opportunity to be here on Wednesday evening. Thank you for uh, your goodness and grace. And we ask you to just to minister tonight. To every heart and life that's here thank you for the children that are in our bible club the teenagers that are uh, out in the teen building this evening and just speak to their hearts and lord thank you for allowing us to have them here and uh, and to influence them for jesus christ we pray tonight now you'll meet needs in the lives of the folks who assembled here in the auditorium and uh, lord we just pray we'll open up our heart to what it is you want to say to us and lord we'll uh, have uh, ears to to hear and to do and, uh, Lord, we just uh, ask again now you'd meet 
uh, needs and uh, give wisdom uh, for choices and decisions that need to be made. Uh, Lord, provide the needs that we have. We pray for those tonight who are unable to come and, and can't be in the services. And Lord, we just lift them up before you. And we just pray, Father, that your grace would be very close to them. And uh, we'll thank you for it. We ask it all tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming out and being here on a Wednesday evening. And uh, we've had a lot of temperature changes throughout the week, haven't we? And uh, uh, it's gotten, uh, gotten cold and windy, and it looks like tomorrow it could get a little snowy. So uh, we're going to have a whole lot of different weather in one week. But it is a blessing to see you, and thank you for coming out and being here. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, warn you, and you can tell already I'm kind of like some of you. I'm coughing and sneezing. I can't stop blowing my nose and all those kind of things. And uh, I've been uh, working on this for uh, a week or so, and I can't get over it. So uh, I apologize. I don't know what will happen tonight when I start uh, preaching, but we'll see what, what we can do, all right? Uh, but... Uh, yes, that's a birthday present. That's my birthday present, and, uh, and uh, we're thankful for it. But we're glad you're here. Thank you for coming and being here. I hope everybody got a bulletin, and if you need one, uh, Brother Warman has some. He'll get, get them for you, and uh, we want you to have that. Be sure to keep up on everything that's going on and happening here in our church. A couple other things I want to be sure that you have or that you're aware of. Uh, I, want to, I want to encourage you, as we've been speaking about, uh, encouraging you to pray about being a part of the South Point College of the Bible, and uh, we meet on Thursday evenings, and I look forward to it and enjoy teaching God's Word, and, and uh, we're thankful for the students who've been a part of it, uh, some every semester, others when they can or when their work schedules allow. Uh, but we're thankful for uh, those who are a part of that. But we would love to have you pray about attending those classes. And uh, you, you won't be uncomfortable uh, in, the, in the classroom. We won't call on you or we won't single you out or anything like that. You won't have to, uh, to do any of those kind of things. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we do encourage you to, to take and pick up one of the uh, information booklets that we have. There are some at both of our exits. I hope you'll take a look at it and uh, look at the classes that we're offering this semester, and uh, and you'll uh, you'll pray about coming out and being a part of this. And uh, we meet from 6:30 till 8:30 on Thursday nights. We have three different classes that we're teaching this semester. If you're interested and have questions, let me know. Uh, inside the information booklet is a registration form, and if you want to be a part of the classes this semester, just fill this out, turn it in to me, and if you want uh, to go ahead and get your textbooks that you'll need, right here on the, uh, on the rail is a card that has all the books that you'll need, and uh, you can get those all very cheaply. I, I noticed that most of these books are available, well, at least two of the three for uh, less than five dollars, probably, if you want, to, if you don't mind a used book, and uh, you can find them on Amazon uh, or eBay, somewhere like that. Uh, you can uh, find them at a place called Thrift Books. If you don't mind used books, you can get them very cheap. And uh, the other book, the Exploring Romans book, still probably be able to get that for ten to fifteen dollars. And so your textbooks will be the only expenses that you have for the classes. So if you're interested, just be sure to pick up one of the brochures and look through that and fill your cards out and uh, be ready to go. And if you are planning on attending the classes but you need your book list, they're right here on the rail. So we encourage you to pick one of those up and go ahead and get your books ordered. And uh, it'll be here before you know it now, just a week or so away, and uh, we'll be having uh, our spring semester uh, and that helps us, doesn't it, to call it the spring semester, even though it's going to be starting in January, we'll be finishing uh, in May, and uh, so we want you to be a part of that. Uh, another thing I have that I want to pass around tonight is uh, a request or a reservation form for a church calendar. Uh, we don't print uh, up just, you know, uh, a... Uh, random amount we we do uh, want to print up though what we need uh, they're they're pretty labor intensive to print them we do all the printing we do the the binding all that here ourselves 
and so it is a little bit labor intensive but we want everyone that wants a calendar to have a church calendar and our church calendars will be available during our vision night services and they'll be in the ministry center we have a table there set up your calendar will be there with your name on it and uh, you can pick it up it'll have 95 percent of all the things going on at our church it will be in there there's a one year uh, read through the bible schedule every day of the year has a portion of scripture and if you start back on january the first catch up till uh, the uh, 15th then you can read through the whole bible in a year and you just check that off every day that you look at your calendar and uh, so lots of information in the calendar that we want you to have and if you would like to have a copy of the calendar uh, just uh, uh, just sign up now uh, if you uh, if you if you are a family that uh, would only need one calendar then just put your family like put the Melvin family and or the John Melvin family and that way we'll only print one but if you want more than that then put your names on there okay uh, so uh, so we'll have a better understanding about how many of the calendars you print but we'll go ahead and start that around John I'll just give that to you <clears throat> just put your name on there and we'll have those printed up and ready for you during vision night on January the 15th and we want you to be praying about that day uh, we'll uh, begin at 5 p.m. that evening which is a little earlier for us but uh, we spend the major portion of the evening service uh, showing you some video and, and giving you some visual uh, ideas of all the different types of ministries, the new ministries, uh, things that may be, uh, we may be adding to our church ministries throughout the upcoming year, uh, special meetings, uh, important dates for things. Uh, we'll be showing those to you visually as well as speaking to you about them in that service. And we want to have a vision for what God can and will do in our homes and hearts in our church for 2017. And so we'll share that. Then we'll, then we'll move over to the ministry center. We'll have some just very simple refreshments for you. But we'll have a lot of resources there available for you. And uh, there'll be opportunities there for you to pick up things like uh, family devotion guides and also other Bible reading schedules uh, and uh, just a variety of different booklets on different topics. Uh, there'll be places for you to go ahead and register to be involved in different ministries throughout the year as well as registering for uh, participating in Christmas cards or getting your name and your birthday and anniversary and our rotation just a lot of different things that we'll have in there and so that's an exciting night for us and we look forward to that on january the 15th but i hope you have your bulletin and i uh, hope you're praying for all the ministries that we have uh, here in the bulletin and uh, praying for all the things we have going on uh, here on our church property tonight and then very soon the uh, ohio southern university uh, semester will begin and we'll begin back down there again Evan with the Bible clubs on the campus and so be praying for those things and again we're encouraging everyone to be involved in Sunday school in 2017 and we want to try to enroll everyone in a Sunday school class and we'll talk more about that on the 15th and have some resources and materials available for you uh, that day and uh, we want you to be in a Sunday school class and uh, we want to help share with you how important it is, uh, not just for yourself, but for our church. I hope that we'll get into the idea or the, or the process of thought in 2017 that, that I, you, are an individual, but you are a part of a body. And our body is what is Tri-State Baptist Temple. And it's made up of all of you. And Tri-State Baptist Temple isn't this building or the property. This is where Tri-State Baptist Temple, the church, meets. And the church is made up of born-again, baptized believers who are voluntarily uh, united themselves together to further the work of God in the world. And that's you. And so what you do with you affects the whole body. And uh, you understand, uh, maybe, maybe you uh, have, uh, have uh, ever had a, have you ever had your leg go to sleep on you or your arm or something like that? your leg go to sleep and if you ever had to jump up real quick boy you probably would fall because that leg just doesn't know what's going on and it's not helping the body 
And so the body can't do what the body should do. But don't forget in 2017, don't go to sleep on the body, which is Tri-State Baptist Temple. Uh, be involved in this church. Be involved in what's going on because you individually affect the whole body. And our whole body as a church will be stronger and we will be more edifying and we will be better able to serve the Lord if we will all be in Sunday school. And so I hope that makes sense. And that's just, that's just a brief comment. I'll try to preach some more on that before, uh, before Vision Day is over with, all right? But I hope you help to see that picture of that because we, you, have an impact on the whole body and we'll never be as strong as a whole uh, and, uh, as we will be until every individual member is as strong as they can be. And so Sunday school will help us to do that. We have a whole list of folks we have on our prayer list and we're praying for the folks that you see here, and uh, we want you to be praying with us about them. And uh, you may have someone, in fact, you'd like to add to the prayer list that we don't have on here currently, and we want to put them on there for you. Uh, anyone have something you'd like to add to the prayer list tonight? Okay. Okay. Destiny. All right. Does she know if it's a girl or a boy? Girl. She lived near you? Okay. 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 He's well, we'll pray for her. And it'd probably be good for her to get on back home tonight, maybe with some weather we might have. I'm sure Caleb's probably ready to get back out there and get out of this cold weather. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Good. Well, he he sure looked good and looks the part. He's he's a he's a Yeah. Good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. Someone else tonight? Oh, Lucy? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. When will, where, where will that be, Lucy? They planning on that just being a same day type surgery? Yeah. All right, uh, Maddie. Okay. All right. We need to just put him on here, Maddie. Stephen Mentor. He's in the Navy. Is there a family name there, Michael? The McDaniels. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Okay. 
Okay, someone else today? Okay. Anyone else? All right. Well, we want to pray for uh, these folks. I hope you'll keep your prayer list and just keep it in your Bible. And as you get your Bible out each day, get your prayer list out and pray for the things that we have here as well as those that we've added. And uh, just remember them all in prayer. Uh, we like to get a couple of our men, if they will, to come. And we'll receive our evening tithes and offerings and our mission offerings here tonight. And... Uh, Work out, uh, work out good. We'll get our men to pray for us and remember these things tonight as well. And uh, we'll just remember these things in prayer. Okay, why don't one of our men pray for us there? On the back there, I want you to notice a few of the things that are happening, and uh, I want to encourage uh, all of uh, the folks that are here tonight. Uh, many of you could help us out during our Kings Court basketball uh, ministry, and uh, the games will begin in February, the first Saturday in February, and there's a lot of uh, things that we need help with, a variety of different things that uh, are necessary to make a, a typical Saturday happen. Uh, the preparation and the cleanup and all that goes on in between. And so we can use your help. It's always good just to have our church family there to greet and meet new people and just to speak to them and talk to them and uh, show ourselves friendly. And so uh, I hope you'll drop by some this uh, year and uh, meet some of the families and encourage them to come and visit us at church. Uh, but we, uh, we rely upon uh, some of our folks to help us out with the uh, with the coaching uh, aspect, and uh, you don't have to be, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a great uh, basketball coach to be a part of this ministry. Uh, the most important thing a basketball coach will do is give a devotion to their children during practice. That's going to be the most important thing they do because that happens every practice is they share a Bible devotion, and we give out each week scripture memory verses, and so uh, we try to bring the Word of God into the children's hearts and into their homes, whether that home uh, or those hearts uh, are in, 
involved in a church anywhere or not. And so we're trying to help reach them with the gospel. And uh, you can help us, men or women. We can use your help uh, in a coaching capacity. And uh, we need you. Uh, this coming Saturday morning is our first day of practices. And we'd like to have our coaches out about 8.30. So if you're planning on helping us out, uh, come out about 8.30. We want to meet together and talk about a few things upcoming in the season and just pray together. And uh, then this year we're encouraging our coaches to be sure to come out and help uh, during the practice times in the month of January uh, that, uh, that, uh, that reflect the group of children or the age that you'll be coaching. And once our games begin in February, our individual coaches and their teams practice once a week if they can. But during the month of January, we practice all the age groups together uh, each Saturday. That way, all of our children through the month of January uh, get the same type of coaching. They begin to learn the same fundamentals. They begin to learn the same basic things. And, uh, and so that's, that's uh, I think, helps and puts all of, our, all of our participants on a level playing field. Uh, so we need our coaches who are going to be coaching uh, during the season to come and be a part of those practice times. And uh, practices will begin at 9 o'clock. If you have a child uh, or a grandchild participating, uh, you'll see the practice schedule there in the bulletin. Fourth, fifth, and sixth grade will practice at, at 9. Uh, first, second, and third grade at 10. And pre-K and kindergarten practice at 11. Uh, if you still have children who want to participate, just bring them out or tell them to be here uh, according to whatever time that they uh, that that was, uh, that has relevant to their age group. So, uh, if you know someone who's in the second grade, have them be here at 10 o'clock, and we'll get them signed up and taken care of. Uh, but we're looking forward to it. We've got a, a a large number of new families participating, so we're looking forward to getting to meet them and influencing them for Christ. Uh, we have a large, a large number of older children this year uh, than normal, and that's good. We like that age group because that age group's getting ready to get into teen group and youth group, and it's a good age to transition them into that. And so we're looking forward to a good year. So uh, you pray about that, and if you want to help us coaching, uh, then just be here at 8.30 on Saturday morning. Uh, then, uh, again, uh, pray about the Bible College. We'd love to have you come out and do that. You can do it. Uh, you can do the work, and you can study, and you can, you can pass and get credit for those classes. I know you can. And uh, so uh, I hope you'll study that and think about that and uh, be involved in that this semester and uh, allow the Lord to use that in your heart and life. And what he puts into your heart, you can take into your home. And again, our church will be strengthened uh, by uh, having you involved in that as well, just like Sunday school. So we're thankful for that opportunity. Uh, looks like we've got a wonderful new group of, of winter decorations in church, doesn't it? And I came in this afternoon, and boy, this is all just looking nice, and big red wreaths out on the front doors, and, and uh, I'm thankful for that. Just a blessing. And I know Terry and Linda are doing that, and uh, uh, they're just uh, encouraging. They, they got the touch to do that, and so we're blessed and thankful for it. And I uh, know it's going to look nice. And they, they you know, just uh, some, some people just make your week. And they, they asked me uh, before Christmas if it'd be all right for them to go ahead and just change over for winter. And I said, absolutely. And... Uh, and, uh, and then they said, well, what about spring? Can we just go ahead? And I said, let me pray about it. I said, yep, you can. And then, uh, then right on through the whole year. And so uh, we may wind up with some wonderful new decorations and things. So, so just think about it. Tell them, hey, we appreciate what you're doing. And it means a lot, doesn't it? And uh, we're thankful and blessed because of that. Well, on a Wednesday night, we enjoy having folks take a moment maybe and just share a verse of Scripture, something that maybe you've been blessed by in your studies or devotions, in your personal reading. Uh, don't forget, if you uh, subscribe and get the Baptist Bread, the daily devotional booklet, they are here on the table back in the foyer, and be sure to get those, and you'll have to catch up here uh, the last uh, few days, but you can do that and uh, get that and take that with you. But uh, uh, it, you may have come across a verse that was a blessing. Maybe you just have a, an answer to prayer or a praise you'd like to share or a word of testimony. 
And uh, we want to encourage you just to share that. Uh, anyone tonight maybe have something the Lord's laid on your heart? Good. Amen. Yeah. Good. Amen. Great. That's good. That's a good. Wow, that'd be great. Amen. That'd be good. Praise the Lord and uh, give the Lord the thanks for that. Amen. Daddy made me a birthday picture today. The, the, day, the daycare kids all had me a gift for my birthday, and, and they all had taken a piece of paper and drew me a picture. And so I, uh, I, 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 got, I had them all there, and they were all gathered around, and I held them up. I wanted to see whose was who, you know, and see, <laughs> see, who, see who would take credit for, one, for some of them. And, uh, but uh, they were all good, and uh, it was a blessing. Got me a great gift. And... Uh, I believe uh, I saw Nikki's fingerprints on that gift. You know, Nikki works at the daycare, but it was all my favorite things. And if you're around me much outside of church, you know, my favorite things uh, are Starbucks coffee. So there's a bag of coffee in there and a bag of, uh, of peanuts in the shell. That's one of my favorites. And uh, from a child, I had a grandmother that got potato sticks in a can. You remember them? And I love those, and they're hard to find, but she had me a big can of those in there. So, boy, I scored today. That was great. And all those good, uh, good, uh, good pictures and things. So, it's been a good birthday. Amen. Amen. Anyone else today have something, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> well, he got it for me. He, he brought it to me, and it was good. I liked it. It had an ink pen in there, and I uh, need that. I was looking for one today, and uh, a uh, gift certificate in there to the mustard seed. So that was a great gift. That rascal, I didn't know he said that. I'd have, I'd have squeezed him harder when he hugged me. Oh. Uh, Amen, yeah. <laughs> on, on this big birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. 
Anyone else today? All right, well, let's take our Bibles and uh, find the book of Exodus 19, chapter 19. I want to just remind you what we began uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, to look at uh, as far as this, uh, this uh, current uh, message and the series that we've been preaching on that we've entitled The Treasures of Darkness. And we, uh, we have been looking at places in the Word of God where uh, we, we, we begin to learn and understand that God, uh, God does a work in our lives even in some dark times, even in times when uh, things are difficult, even when times uh, times when uh, things you know are very trying, uh, when things aren't going the way we would like for them to go. Uh, even in those times, and God allows some of those times to come into our lives. Uh, even then, He has treasure in the times of darkness for us. And when we go through those times, we can come out richer. Uh, in our relationship with Jesus Christ and in our spiritual life than we did when, uh, before we went into those times. And so the treasures of darkness. And we're looking at Exodus 19. And you say, Pastor, why, why would you uh, choose this text to go along with that thought? Well, I want you to remember, I want you to remember what, what has been happening in the life of the people that we would call the Hebrew people. For the last 430 years, uh, the people that would go on to become the nation of Israel have been in the land of Egypt. They've been strangers in that land. And for over 200 years, they have been slaves. They had been indentured into servitude and made slaves for the pharaohs. And they had begun to be very severely treated. They, they had very heavy taskmasters who enforced very heavy uh, workloads upon them and, and, uh, and made them do it with very little help and very little resources. And so they were groaning under the burden of being enslaved in Egypt. They were in a dark place in their life, even though they had yet to be what we might call recognized as a nation. They were getting ready to be birthed as a nation and you mothers assuredly know there's a travail before the birth, isn't there? And this is what they had been enduring. And so it was a dark time. And Moses came, God sent him, and he gave them hope, and he gave them uh, the word of God, and he led them out. And God wanted to show them, though, that there was something far greater for them than just a land called Canaan. And that, that that was that God had delivered them out from under Pharaoh and his burden so that they might have and know and be with the true and living God. This is what he desired. And notice what he said in Exodus 19, verse number 1. Let's read a few of these verses, and I'll read a little further than I did the first time. But notice in Exodus 19, verse 1, the Bible said, "...in the third month when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt..." The same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. So now don't forget, they've been delivered, but it's only three months into the journey, and they're in the desert. And things aren't looking a lot more positive to them right now. In fact, a lot of them have murmured to the degree where they, they wanted to go back. And, uh, and they were willing to go back and become slaves again. And so they were still having a difficult time. And... and Canaan seemed so very far away. But notice it says in verse 2, For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. Now notice verse 3, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. God said, Moses, I want you to go and tell them something. I want, you to, I want you to let them know something. 
He says in verse 4, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and I brought you, I brought you unto myself. And I hope you'll mark that phrase, brought you unto myself, because this is what God wanted them to know. He wanted them to know that He had delivered them ultimately for the purpose so that they might be with Him and that they might have the freedom and liberty to worship Him and serve Him. I brought you unto myself. Yes, I'm taking you to a land. I'm taking you to a land that I promised Abram when he was still uh, down in the land of Ur in the Chaldees. I promised him a land and I promised to make his seed like the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the seashore. And I've done that. I've made you a great people, a great people, millions of people when they came out of Egypt. Millions. Seventy went into Egypt. Jacob his 12 sons, their wives, their children, and now they've become a great, great multitude of people. And God said, though, don't forget that, that, that the meaning of it all, the meaning of all my work in your life is so that I might bring you unto myself. And I think sometimes that we forget the meaning of our lives. The meaning of our lives is to be with God. The meaning of our lives is to worship Him, to serve Him, to, uh, to, uh, to rejoice in Him, to, uh, to, uh, to honor Him, to fear Him, to reverence Him, to lift Him up, to magnify Him. And uh, often I think we are looking at the journey. We get our eyes on the journey and, and we think that the destination is so far out ahead, but in reality... What, what it's really all about is with us all the way. And that's that we're with the Lord. We're with Him. He is with us. And God didn't want them to miss that. Now, let's read a little bit further. He says in verse 5, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. Notice what he said. Above all people, for all the earth is mine. You shall, be, you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. And this is how God saw his people. And this is how God sees you. He sees you as a peculiar treasure, unique, valuable. How valuable, Pastor? Well, he gave his son to die for you, to redeem you, to love you. And he has done all that he's done in our life up until this point that he might bring us unto himself. And may the Lord help us to see that that's really, that's the journey, is journeying along the road with the Lord, brought unto himself. So we begin to look at this. And so we saw the meaning of life for the people of Israel was not a geographical location, but a relationship with the real and living God. That was the, that was the ultimate goal. And then we saw that God does the work of bringing us unto himself, and he gives us, in the Bible, a comparative illustration. And you remember, and you ought to mark this right beside verse number 4 in your Bible in Exodus 19. Just write down this reference, Deuteronomy 32, verse 11 and 12. So find Exodus 19, 4, and right beside it, write Deuteronomy 32, verse 11 and 12. Because here he gives us a comparative illustration of how he goes about doing his work of bringing us unto himself. And notice in verse 4 of Exodus 19, before we turn to Deuteronomy, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and notice this phrase, and how I bear you on eagles' wings. Bear you on eagles' wings. See, God already has it in his mind what he's going to tell them in Deuteronomy 32. And you go there, if you want to turn, Deuteronomy 32, let's look beginning in verse 11. Verse 11, see, God has a method by which he works to bring us to himself so that, so that we know him more closely today than we did yesterday, so that we're abiding in him and finding that it is in him that we have meaning and we have being. It's not in where we are. 
It's not in what we have. It's not in who we are esteemed to be in the world. None of those things give true meaning or being. No, those things are in one person alone, and that's Jesus Christ. And he works to help us to see that, and we see how he does that. What's the method he used? Well, he gives us an illustration. He says in Deuteronomy 32, verse 11, As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. So we find God gives a comparative illustration. He says, he says here, as the eagle, so I work. And I ask you in those verses of Scripture, and I'll, I'll, I'll share it again in case you weren't here, circle the phrase, as an eagle, as an eagle, circle that, as an eagle. And then circle the phrase, so the Lord the first three words of verse 11, the first three words of verse 12, and then draw a line and connect the two circles. And here you have the method God uses. Here you have the comparative illustration of how God works to bring us unto himself. As the eagle, so the Lord. As the eagle, so the Lord. And so we began to look at this. Well, what is it here he says the eagle does? Because whatever the eagle does is what he does. And I told you, I, I, got, uh, I got into the eagle study when I ran across this passage of Scripture, and the Lord just piqued my curiosity about these things. And, and I got some books and did some reading. I was fascinated by, by them. I, I've always felt like they're one of God's just most beautiful creatures, strong and powerful and loyal to one another and, and uh, brave and noble, all these many different things. And, uh, and I, I, I thought it was fascinating. Lucy told me that her, her family's last name in Spanish is, an, is Eagles, and that's what it means. And I thought that's interesting. And uh, so, uh, so I want you to see. Notice we talked about, first of all, the first thing that, that the eagle does, we said, was the eagle builds. He builds. Number one, he builds. As an eagle builds, so the Lord builds. And I gave you the illustration. I asked you, use your imagination and, and think about a, a, a pair of eagles, mates, a, a, a male and a female, and it's breeding time, and it's time for them to, to have a, a family and raise little eaglets, and, and they're getting ready to build a nest, a place for those eaglets to be born and hatched and grow and be strong and and uh, the eagle builds, and, and we get the idea that the eagle is there uh, flying high above some, uh, some rocky uh, cavern or ravine. Maybe like we picture in our mind the Grand Canyon. And they build high up on the cliffs where no one can get to them, where they're safe from, uh, from any enemy that would climb down from the top or none can climb up from the bottom. And they are soaring, and they're looking, and they look for that perfect ledge built into the cliff face and they land and they decide this is where we're going to build and they begin to build and they build a large nest a big nest three or four feet in diameter and very tall and deep and they go down and they find uh, twigs and branches and all other types of materials and they come up with their beaks and their feet and claws and they weave that big nest into a, a, a unit and, until uh, they have the structure of it. But it's far too, uh, too, uh, it's far too uncomfortable for them uh, to actually have the, the eggs in there because the very uh, twigs and branches and sticks and other things they have, it, it might crack the eggs or it might uh, break the eggs. And so, so they go and they begin to gather up moss and they begin to gather up leaves and, and grasses and other types of materials and, and maybe even their own down from up underneath their feathers and they line that nest out till it's nice and soft and thick and, and boy, it's very, very comfortable. And they build. They build a, they build a place conducive for the, for the hatching or birth or the entrance of these eagles into the world. And, uh, you know, God does a building process in our own lives. And we've said this before, none of us are self-made people. None of us are self-made people. Sometimes 
you know, uh, someone considers what it takes to prepare to speak. We, we shared with you to teach or to preach. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, when our Bible college classes are in session, uh, I, I'll, I'll speak Sunday school, Sunday morning church, Sunday night church, uh, Wednesday night, and then lecture two to three classes on uh, Thursday night, and then maybe there's a school chapel or a funeral, or sometimes I run out of fingers in one week, one week. And I, you know, I, 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 I know for myself what it takes, the process that I have to go through to prepare. Uh, someone said, well, how long does it take you to prepare? Well, you know, it can, it, it's, it's an ongoing process. I'm never not preparing to speak, never. I, I, I'm, I sat down at my study this morning at the house and, and I sketched out five or six pages of notes from the passage of scripture. I feel like the Lord would have me preach on Sunday morning, but I'm already thinking about uh, what will be next week and what will be, and I'm trying to set out for the year where we'll go throughout the year and courses of study and things I'll collect and begin to read to, to study and to help my heart to grow and help me to, uh, to, to, uh, to develop the message the Lord has uh, for you, and so it's an ongoing process. Uh, a sermon uh, it takes se me several hours of reading and research for one message, and I'll pull out different books and I'll read on all that subject, and I'm reading other passages of scripture, comparing scripture with scripture, and and I write down a series of notes as I did this morning, and then I'll go back through all those notes that I wrote, and I'll I'll scratch out all the things that I feel like I, I, I can do without saying. And, uh, and then I know a lot of you say, boy, you need to scratch out a whole lot more, Pastor. Uh, but uh, anyway, I, I, I don't deliver what I have come up with to begin with. I, I edit it down. And then I'll go through it a third time. I go through every one three times until I arrive at what I'll uh, share with you on a, on a Sunday or a Wednesday night. And, uh, you know, but, but, the, but the reality of the matter is this. Every sermon, every Sunday school lesson, whatever I t I've taught or preached, how long did it take, Pastor? It took a lifetime. Why? Because God's been building me all my life. He's been at work. And so the things that are part of my heart and my life and my mind that he will use this coming Sunday morning in that message and illustration, whatever it may be. He's been working on me for a lifetime for that moment. And so none of us are, are self-made. God's doing a building process. He's doing a work in our life. We're the sum total of every little experience of life. That's who we are today. Every little bit God has built into our life, that's who we are. Every circumstance and situation that we've had to go through, and some of them have been easy, and some of them have been hard, some of them have been in the sunlight, some of them have been in the darkness, but they all together make us who we are today. And God's been building. He's building in our lives. And all that God has done, God is at work, building our lives, preparing us for what we are today, where we are today, where we are and what he wants to use us to accomplish. God builds. He builds in our lives. Nothing is finished yet. I'm not finished. And you're not finished. Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this very thing. That he that hath begun a good work in you. Will, pre will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What is that day pastor? That's the day the Lord comes again. Or I go to be with him. In other words, God's going to keep building and working until I see him face to face. Till I'm no longer living by faith, but living by sight. He's going to build. God is building, and Jesus Christ is the blueprint. Jesus Christ is the blueprint, and I'm not complete yet, and God will not stop working, not stop building us and bringing us unto himself until we are finished in his presence. You write down Matthew 16, and I just want to—I want to give you this verse of scripture. These few verses here out of Matthew 16, Jesus is speaking to his <clears throat> disciples, and he's been preaching and teaching all along the coast of Caesarea Philippi, and and um, he's getting ready to make a great fundamental 
announcement in the scriptures. Matthew 16, verse number 13. The Bible said when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Whom do men say that I am? And they said, Well, Lord, some say that thou art John the Baptist. See, John the Baptist had been, been beheaded. He was martyred. And uh, he had been off the scene now for a while. And some people began to speak and say, Well, maybe this is that John the Baptist we heard about, not knowing that he had died or that he had been killed. And then the Bible goes on to say, Some... Some say you're Elias. And this is, the, this is the Greek word for the Hebrew word Elijah. Same thing. Elijah, Elias, Hebrew, Greek. Same person. You remember Elijah, he had been taken up into heaven, hadn't he? He'd been taken up out of, the, out of their sight. And so, uh, so some people thought, this is Elijah come back down from the heavens. And uh, because Jesus... Uh, was a was a strong preacher. He was a he was a man of God, a preacher like those Old Testament prophets. He thundered out the word of God. Thus saith the Lord God. And so some said he's like Elijah. Maybe he's Elijah. The Bible goes on to say others Jeremiah. This is the this is the same word for Jeremiah. And you say, Pastor, why did they think that? I think I think they thought that because some of them saw him. Some of them saw him standing by the graveside of Lazarus in John chapter 11. And the Bible says in John eleven thirty five, 35, and Jesus wept. And maybe some saw him as he stood up and looked out over Jerusalem. And he wept and he said, uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have gathered you under my wings like a hen does her chicks. But you would not. And they saw him weep. And they saw his compassion. And they remember Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. And I think some thought, maybe this is Jeremiah. And then others, one of the prophets, verse 15, He, Jesus, saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And boy, when he said that, he said a lot. Because He's saying that this Jesus is the Old Testament promised Messiah. The promised one of God. The Messiah whom they had been looking for. Simon Peter said, you're the one. You're the Christ. The word Christ, the Messiah. Here again, the same word. One is Hebrew, one is Greek. But it means the same. The anointed one of God. The anointed sent Savior, And there was only one of those. God sent a lot of prophets, didn't he? A lot of Old Testament prophets. And you know, they were so cruelly treated. Their messages were withstood. Many of them were martyred, put to death. Many prophets. John the Baptist, what a great, he was the last of the prophets. And, John, and Jesus said of him, there's not been a greater than John. Of all the prophets, there's not been a greater. But there's only one Messiah, one Christ, one Son of the living God. And Simon Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said in verse 17, And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He said, in other words, what you, what you know is a spiritually discerned truth. And you know what? When we receive Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, the Spirit of God has, has revealed that same truth to our heart, hasn't he? The Spirit of God impresses upon our heart that Jesus Christ was and is the promised Savior of God. And he says in verse 18, this statement, and I say also unto thee, thou art Peter. Thou art Peter. Now, now, do you see this? He changed his name. See, he's been Simon up until this point. But now he's Peter. Why did he do it? Why did he do it here and now? So that we wouldn't be confused about what he's about to say. Because we weren't there to see it. Peter means a little pebble. 
what the word means. Little pebble, just a little rock, just one out of many, maybe, maybe lying under their feet there that day. Peter, thou art Peter, just a little pebble. But then Jesus said, but upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the Lord's been building his church. He's still building. You say, Pastor, why are we still here in this world? Why didn't the Lord come again? Because he's not finished building. Still building. Still building his church. He's been building his church since then, and he's still building it. The Lord builds. As the eagle, so the Lord. We must be pliable in his hands. We must let him use our lives and build us and uh, be yielded to his word and seek his will and follow his way. And the Lord is faithful to work. He builds. He's building you. He's built you for who you are at the moment, where you are, and what he wants you to do. But, but he'll keep building you because he's going to keep growing you. And he's going to keep using you, maybe somewhere else, and maybe with some other great work. But the Lord's going to keep building. He's still building. But as the eagle, so the Lord. The Lord builds. Now, we can't get into this tonight, but the second thing he does is he breaks. He breaks. You say, you mean, Pastor, he builds us up to break us down? Well, a little bit of that, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we need broke down a little bit. And, uh, and, and it's interesting what those eagles do. See, those little baby eagles, they get up there and get pretty big. It gets crowded in that nest. And no eagle has ever been made that God made it just to sit on that cliff all of its life, never know what it's like to fly, spread its wings and soar, God never made an eagle just to have him sitting on a tree branch all day, every day, like a parrot, something like that. No, didn't build him to occupy a cage. He built him to be majestic and spread his wings and, and with those eagle eyes uh, look over. Uh, he, he's the Lord of all he surveys. No one, nothing can catch him. Nothing can hurt him. Nothing can do him harm. But you know those little eagles, boy, they start to get big and that nest gets crowded and they, they've never flown yet. But they've got to learn how. And so, but you know what? They're comfortable because that nest is strong, safe. It's all fluffy and nicely padded. There's food that comes in there all the time. So how is God going to get them eagles out of that comfy place they've gotten to in their life? You know what? That eagle, those eagles, what they do? They start breaking up the nest. You ever get uncomfortable where you are in your life? God ever, God ever bring some circumstances and situations into your life that you just realize, you know what? Something, something's got to change. Something's got to happen. And you know what? God is building and because there's another place he wants to take you to in your relationship with him, and in your growth, but you know what you've done? You've gotten in a rut and got stuck where you are. And so what does God have to do? He has to come in there and start breaking some things up. And that's what we're going to look at next time, all right? As the Lord, as the eagle, so the Lord. As the eagle builds, so the Lord builds. As the eagle breaks, so the Lord breaks. So the Lord breaks. Some of the greatest decisions, choices, in life I've made, especially in the ministry. I say, Pastor, how in the world do you know that it's God's will for you to leave a church in Tennessee and come to Ohio? How do you know that? I'll tell you how and what the Lord has to do. The Lord has to do some breaking. He has to do some breaking up and get us to the point where we're looking ahead. And so we'll look at that next Wednesday night. But it's been a good place to be. Time goes so quickly on Wednesday. We need to go and get out of here. Be careful. It's going to be cold and uh, maybe some weather and things if you have to get out early and go in the morning. There is a weather advisory. Our church cast information system that we send messages to you on, they send us weather alerts. 
and there is a weather watch from 9 a.m. to 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. So just kind of be on your toes if you're out and about and uh, watch for that. Especially if you see anything on the road that looks wet, could be icy, and uh, so be careful. All right, well, uh, <clears throat> you got to work tomorrow, Kevin? No? Good. That's good. You won't have to be doing any traffic accidents, will you, up there? Huntington, people sliding into each other and stuff. All right, well, let's pray together. Let's pray together. Lord, we look to you tonight. We thank you for your goodness and grace in our hearts and lives. Thank you, Father, for your patience. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness in building in our lives. And Lord, help us to respond to your work. Help us not to get satisfied to stay where we are. Help us not to, Lord, underachieve, God, what your plan and potential is when you saved us. And so, Lord, help us to stretch our spiritual wings and to, to soar, God, where you'd have us to go and do what you'd have us to do. And so, Lord, we just pray you'd help us to give attention to the breaking that sometimes you do in our lives so that we'll uh, give heed and we'll be obedient, follow you and seek your will. Lord, somebody may have come to church tonight but has never come to Christ for salvation. We pray tonight they'd not leave the services, but Lord, they'd stay after and let us take your word and show them how you are the chosen Savior, the Messiah sent from God. And Lord, we just ask now you'd give each and every one a great continuing week. Use us. Help us to be soul conscious everywhere we are every day. And uh, Lord, we just pray you'll, uh, Lord, bless and minister. And uh, God, minister to the hearts of those who will be helping us in our King's Court program. Prepare them and use them. And Lord, we look forward to meeting with them at 8.30 on Saturday morning. And uh, so Lord, give us a great Lord's Day. We'll thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>